Hey y'all, it's Katie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you guys saw from the title, I am putting myself through the ringer by not only showing you all the palettes that I bought or tried out or tested from just 2020, which is an embarrassing number. Let's just throw that out there. It's a lot. But I'm also ranking them in the order from my least favorite all the way up to my most favorite. <sighs> I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. <laughs> I have been seeing so many of my favorite YouTubers doing this, kind of like a mid-year favorites, sharing all the palettes that they've tried and their thoughts and opinions and ranking them to let you know like how they stack up with all the palettes that they've tried because I do think it's very informative to see not just month by month which palettes of mine, how they rank, but also just in general with the collection that I have from 2020, not my whole entire collection. That would be insane, but at least just showing from what I have tried this year and ranking them and that might be a little bit more helpful for you guys to see which ones stand out, which ones rise to the top and which ones don't. So I thought it'd be super informative and part of me knew it was going to be hard. Let me just say it was 10 times harder than I thought it would be and I already thought it was going to be hard to begin with. So there's that, but we are going to be doing that today and I'm going to try to keep this intro short because we have over 30 palettes to talk about today. Yeah, so let's just dive right into my Instagram shout out for today. And the Instagram shout out for today goes to the beautiful Selena. Her uh, username is always with a Z underscore Selena. Uh, she has, I hope I'm saying that right. I feel like I'm saying that wrong, but she has been a longtime commenter and follower of mine, both on Instagram and on YouTube. So thank you so very much for always interacting with my content. I really do appreciate it. And you are the Instagram shout out for today. And per usual, if you want a chance to be the Instagram shout out at the beginning of my videos, all you have to be doing is following me on Instagram it's LadyKady92 and comment on my posts as they go up and I randomly select someone every time I sit down to film a new video. So let's jump right into it shall we? I also want to say before I really dive in that I am ranking these per my personal preferences because it's just impossible to rank a palette and be able to like do it justice on both the quality and also my preferences because they're all over the place. Some palettes are really good quality but they're just my, not my preference with the color scheme or something like that. So I finally decided since this is my ranking video I would do it by my preferences and kind of I looked at these and I determined where to rank them as in which one am I most excited to reach for and create more looks out of it and that's how they kind of ended up in the ranking. If you want to hear my in-depth review and, and to get more information on like the lasting power, how they blend, all that sort of things, I will have links to all of my reviews, my Palapalooza reviews from this month. There should be six of them. So I'll have all those linked down below and you can watch those and I go into much greater detail and then I'll see how many links I can include because this might get a little crazy but if I have three looks on palettes I'll try to include those too so you can see these palettes in action. So the one that ended up at number 33 I felt pretty bad about. Um, I'm not going to be verbally saying the numbers just because I didn't number them beforehand. So I'll put a little thing over here so you guys know what number we are on because I'm sure I will get out of count. But anyway, the very, very bottom of this ranking video, unfortunately, I feel so bad, like I said, but it goes to Storybook Cosmetics Little Red Riding Hood Palette. I got this in a BoxyCharm. And honestly, like, it's not terrible. I would say my favorite part of this is definitely the mattes, which are these three right here, which is why I decided to put it at the bottom because they are very neutral mattes. The only exciting color for me was this red, and when you actually use it, ugh, I should probably not be swatching because I'll be a mess, but I'll just do it. A couple of them but uh, as you can see it's a very translucent it's a very kind of like a watercolor type of red definitely not a red red and for being a little red riding hood like come on put a good red in there so for those reasons and since there's only six shadows I mean out of all the palettes I have I was thinking as I said I don't know if I'll ever create another look with this just because it just doesn't inspire me I just keep it because it's cute Okay, next up in my countdown is the Butter London Teddy Girls palette. And again, while I think the mattes in here are very nice and I put it above the other one because the mattes in here I enjoyed more and like they were more interesting to me, that the mattes being this, 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 and this, and I think this one is more of a matte, but there was more color, there was more options for depth in my look, so I enjoyed this. The shimmers, once again, are very much more of a, just a satiny type of overspray, I guess you could say. They're very, very soft, so that's why I put it here because while I think the mattes are very nice and they're honestly better in my opinion than the storybook cosmetics am i going to reach for this ever slash anytime soon no so the next one in my countdown is the Violet by Juvia's Place. I feel like I give this palette such a hard time because there's only two mattes in this palette and the darker matte, which is my favorite because I love to deepen up eye looks. The darker one is a total dud, so you're really only left with one very light, which is honestly more of a pastel, especially when you blend it out. It took so much work to get this to show up in my eye looks. So just for me, the mattes in here are a total miss. But with that said, the shimmers are very nice. So I can foresee myself reaching back into this specifically to use the shimmers in a look, and that's kind of why I 
to put it a little bit higher and why I plan to hold on to it because these shimmers are the typical Juvia's Play shimmers. They're very nice formula. They're so soft. They're so buttery. They're so pigmented. They glide on so easily and they look so beautiful in eye looks, but the two mattes are just such a bummer. So that's why I'm placing it right here at number 31, I think. I know I said it wouldn't count, but here I am. So the next palette, I decided to place the Lorac Neon Lights here because while I can foresee myself reaching for this palette again in the future, so we're getting more towards palettes that mm, I can see myself using them, um, I know that I will only ever reach into this palette to use maybe these three shades. These... No, the blue was really difficult to work with. So I can see myself reaching back for it. So that's why I put it a little bit higher. But when we're talking about quality and like ease of use when it comes to vibrant colors, not that easy, hence why it's nearly at the bottom. Next up, I decided to put the Nettie Bird Sibling Rivalry Palette next because while it is a green palette, and I know you guys are probably thinking, wait, Katie, you like green, it should be higher. I didn't like the variety of textures within this green palette because you guys know I like my mattes. And when we're talking about strictly matte shades, there's just these two and these two, oh, and this one. Those are actually true matte shades. Everything else is a cross between like a shimmer and then most of them just have that satiny look to them. So for me personally, when we're talking about the looks that I did with this, they were just okay because the mattes were very limiting. I did use some of the shimmers like the yellow in my crease. I just don't like how shimmers look in my crease, so that's not my preference. And then if I did use a shimmer on my lid, it just kind of looked like a, a sad shimmer. So for me, that's the main reason why I'm putting this so low. And then also the three glitters. I don't enjoy using glitters, so that's another you know, reason that this palette goes a bit lower, but all around it's an okay palette. I would use it again because it's a green palette. I can see myself going in for this with like yellow on the lid and green all on the, you know, crease and whatnot. But other than that, I don't know. It's just, it was just okay. Next up is the Ace Beauté Vintage Dawn Palette. This palette looks so pretty, and if I went by looks alone, this would be so very near the top. Like, it is beautiful. I love how vibrant this orange is, especially, like, the, the orange just leaps out at me, and I love the grunginess and the kind of mustardy rustiness of the rest of this palette, and even the mix of the blue, I feel like it's very interesting, and there's just so much about this color story I absolutely love but I just don't like Ace Beauté's formula. It's very finicky for me for some reason. I feel like I would struggle more often than not blending mattes into each other for some reason. So that was a big reason, a big dead for me when it comes to the mattes. And then the shimmers just, they're nice. They're just not my favorite because they break down really badly on me. So that's why I put this right where it's at. I can foresee myself using this, but it'll only be because I really like the color story. Next up, this is the Mellow Cosmetics Sinopia Palette. This one was really hard because I think the quality of this is outstanding and I would have put this much higher in the list but as I said I'm trying to go with things that I can foresee myself reaching for and creating more looks with again so that's why it's a little bit low on this list because while it is very nice and I do like the quality like I said I think it's very very nice it's very easy to blend they all just blend so easily into each other and the shimmers while they are definitely a more of a softer shimmer they at least pack a punch so while there isn't a whole lot of you know intense metallic there's a lot of shine which I appreciate so that's why I decided to put it here because if I had to like go very neutral for a day or if I was going on trip and I had to do all neutral eyes I can foresee myself bringing this and creating more looks with it because it is just such a very nice formula and I had such an easy time with it anyway all that to say I decided to put it here because the quality is really great and I could potentially use it again okay next up we have the Colourpop uh huh honey palette I would have loved to put this so much higher but this palette I reached for it after trying the Midas lemonade palette which is amazing. Oh, sorry. I was going to sneeze. It is so very nice. I really like the formula. And then I purchased this because I was curious to see what this could offer. If it could give me really yellow looks like the lemonade palette. And no, like this palette will give you no depth and just like a very neutral kind of warm yellow look like there's it's yellow but it's definitely a neutral yellow so for me and also has a pressed glitter which is like the brightest shade in the palette which is a disappointment so while I really like this shade for the inner corner that's about it you can get no depth with this and it's just it's just okay so for me personally if I want to do a yellow look I know I'm going to be reaching for the lemonade over this so that's why it ended up so low next I picked the I Heart Revolution Heartbreakers Lucky Palette it's very cute but the reason I put it so low is because there's just a couple shades in here are not so much a dub but they're just very very light and airy and I just don't I'm not crazy about light and airy especially when it comes to this kind of color story I really wish this yellowish is very light and airy packed more of a punch and it just doesn't this is also very light and the shimmers are just okay they're nothing too crazy but they're nothing bad either I feel like they gave an, a nice little shine but overall when I'm thinking about green palettes and all the green palettes I have I don't foresee myself thinking of this palette and reaching for it there's another palette if I want to go for this color story there's another palette from Makeup Revolution that I would reach 
page four first, which we'll talk about later because it's higher up on the list. Okay, trying to keep this brief and I feel like I'm still being very long-winded. And next is the Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Thunder Palette. We got this in our BoxyCharm because it's like a mini of the original and I like it. I feel like when we're talking about quality and formulas that I love, this probably isn't my most favorite. There's no kind of mid-tone. And again, this is like a mini of the big one. So maybe the big one would have filled in the holes that I felt like I was having with this. But overall, it is very nice um, and I can foresee myself using it again. I feel like if I were to reach for this, I kind of stick to like these tones I feel like would were really fun. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I feel like I can foresee myself using this again. It's not my favorite formula, but it's still a nice palette. So hence where it lands. Okay, next up, I decided to put the Juvia's Place Wahala palette here because while I like the more grungy aspect of this palette, that kind of is where it ends for me. I don't know, something about this color story really had me struggling for some reason. And then we're talking about the shimmers. They aren't my favorite when it comes to Juvia's Place shimmers. Like I love Juvia's Place's shimmers. And I feel like in here, there were one or two that felt like the typical Juvia's Place shimmers that I know and love. But most of them just kind of felt average, I feel like, especially like this shade. They felt more like shimmers, I guess is what I'm trying to say, than actual like intense intense metallic, which I feel like is what I know and love and expect from Juvia's Place. So too many of them, I feel like for me personally, seemed more just like a very, you know, gentle shine, a regular shimmer. They weren't that metallic type of look. Like I said, some of them are. Um, this was more of a topper. There were more toppers in here. There were duochromes. There were glitters, which just threw me for a loop because that's not what I was expecting for Juvia's Place. And when we're talking about my preferences, I just like a good old metallic to look really intense, wet, foiled looking on my eyes. I don't have to worry about glitter. I don't have to worry about building it up when it's just a shimmer. And I don't have to worry about duochromes changing up my eye look when I'm not expecting it. And I just, I don't like toppers. So that's why I put this here. It's not a bad palette quality wise. It's got its little nuances, but for me personally, my preferences, hence why it lands here. Okay, next up would be the Makeup Revolution Birds of Paradise. Oh no, sorry, Forever Flawless Birds of Paradise palette. I like the color story of this palette and I like the mattes on this palette, but when we're talking about the shimmers and then the pressed glitters, don't like either one of them. So this is a palette that, yes, I can foresee myself reaching back for, but it'll be solely to use the matte shades. And then the mattes on top of that, they're just okay. They were a little hard to build up. They weren't the easiest to kind of get popping and get as vibrant of a shade as you see in the pan. But you could get there to some extent using a white base, helping it out, really focusing on packing, that sort of thing. So I can see myself reaching back for this if need be in the future. But yeah, I would definitely be steering clear of the shimmers and the glitters. Okay, next up is the Unetti Bird Vitamin C palette. I was kind of surprised by how high I put this up because I feel like I put the Sibling Rivalry palette pretty darn low. And this has like the same issues when we're talking about like the satiny shades and the glitters. But for this palette, it only has two pressed glitters, which, you know, saved a shadow there. And also when we're talking about the mattes, there's more variety variety in the matte shade. So the mattes in here are this, 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 and this. So while maybe like number wise, it's not that much more than the green, but the color wise, there was a lot more mattes to work with than the green one had. You have some red mattes, you have a brown matte, you have the more neutral, this is like a burnt orange matte, and then you have the yellow matte, and that just gives a lot more variety in the looks that you can get, which is what I always like to see. And I really did like the looks I created with this palette. I think there was one day, it's probably my favorite look I did with the yellow and the red. I kept it very matte and just did yellow red smoked out, and I thought that looked so pretty. And yeah, I just, I had more fun with this palette which honestly again it surprised me because I almost didn't grab this because when I looked at it I was like it's half neutral and then just like one or two red yellow and oranges but actually when I got this palette there's a lot more versatility hence why I put it where it is because I could foresee myself reaching back for it Next up is the Milani Gilded, what is this called? Gilded Jade Palette. This is a really cute palette that honestly really surprised me because when I think of drugstore, I do not think of anything very vibrant and bold. And while this is still a really safe kind of color story when we're talking about color because, you know, it has the neutrals in there, it still has some pop. Like this green, it's nothing like metallic definitely, but it's a nice shimmery green in my opinion. Like I thought it, it looked really pretty. It's got that nice deep green to deepen it up. And it has this very vibrant matte here that works really nicely in the crease. And then it has this which you can use as a highlight or for me all over the lid inner corner and it is a beautiful kind of green duochrome shade it doesn't go too heavy on the green so it works really nice as a highlighter and it just complements the green I guess you could say but it works beautiful as an inner corner highlight and if you pair this as an inner corner highlight or even all over the lid with the greens the green in it stands out a lot more and yeah I was just surprised by how much I like this palette these two and I mean this one a little bit but these two were definitely I didn't really care to use, I didn't really want to use because they're just so boring and if they were out of this palette I feel like it would have gone 
gone a lot higher for me, but even with those in, there's still a lot in here that I found very interesting in, and I wouldn't mind using it again, so. Next, I have the Makeup Revolution Reloaded Euphoria Palette. I have a comparison between this and the Flawless Birds of Paradise Forever Flawless Palette. If you're curious, I can leave that linked up here, but this palette ranked higher because I liked this more than the Flawless Forever Birds of Paradise one, mainly because these shimmers in here are actually really pretty. I did a look with the blue, the silver on the lid, and then like smoked out with the black in the outer corner. It's still one of my favorite looks when I look back and I see all the looks that I did with this palette. That is such a beautiful look and I kind of want to recreate that look with, you know, whatever palette next has a blue, a silver, and a black because it's just such a pretty combo and I really liked how it looked. I love that smoked out outer corner, very black and deep, and then the silver with the blue and the crease. It was beautiful. Anyway, that's why I think back on this so fondly, but when we're talking about quality. It's not the most pigmented when you talk about like the mattes in here, but they're workable. Same with the other one. You can kind of build them up and work with them and get Get them to show up. I definitely would have like a very tacky base, a white base, that sort of thing. But besides that, it's nice. I can definitely foresee myself using this again. And when we're talking about palettes from the drugstore that are very colorful, this is definitely one of the ones I would recommend because it's just kind of a rainbow of colors that actually are pretty easy to work with. Next up, I'm going to be placing the Elf and Jay Kissa to the Rescue palette. This palette lot has so many struggles when it comes to the formula, especially the purples and the reds. I just, I don't like them. But even with all of that, when I'm thinking and looking at this palette and going, like do I want to ever use this again I actually don't mind it when we're talking about the yellows and the greens and the blues I thought it was very pretty and also the shimmers are really nice so even with all the cons when it comes to this palette how tricky it can be to work with when we're talking about very colorful shadows in comparison with indie makeup when we're talking about the palettes in my collection I, I wouldn't mind using this again and that's why I decided to put it higher than it. When we're talking about quality, it might have went a lot lower, but as I said I'm going off of palettes that I wouldn't mind using it again and ranking it in that way so for me this one with all of its cons, with all of its quirks, I wouldn't mind using it again. All right, moving right along, we're getting into, uh, as we got higher to the top with all of my favorites that I really did like, it was very hard to rank them. But next up, I'm going to be placing the Strobe Cosmetics Divinity Palette here. I really enjoyed the quality of this palette. Funny enough, when I did my palette palooza with this, I did my review of the video, and then afterwards I went and swatched this, and I never swatched these either of these palettes before at all. I just used them directly on my eyes, and they performed beautifully. But when I swatched them, when I tell you they swatched horribly, uh, I'm not like understating it. Like they just don't swatch that well. They have like a very firm top layer that makes it really hard to pick up with your finger. But with that said, I used it with a brush and I never had any issues. So that threw me for a loop. But anyway, I really enjoyed this palette. The color story is very unique, which is why I decided to put it as low as I did on my countdown because when I'm thinking back to all of the eyeshadow palettes and all of the looks that I create, I feel like with this, I'm kind of stuck, at least for me personally, my preferences with these three that I enjoyed the most and the rest of the palette I'm not as excited for. So hence why I put it here. But yeah, really nice quality and I really like the palette even with the nuances of me sometimes not knowing what to do with that color story. Next up is Maya's Cosmetics Green Tea Macchiato Palette. I don't even know if this is like available anymore. I think it was like limited edition for fall last year but this is such a cute little palette and the only reason I'm putting it so low is because there are only four shades and it's a very neutral leaning palette. While it is a very grungy neutral that I enjoy Am I going to be reaching for this super often? Maybe once in a blue moon to create the kind of the standard look when we're talking about this palette with like this in the crease, this to deepen up the crease, this on the outer corner, and this on the lid. I feel like that was always my go-to when I went with this. So I don't foresee myself reaching back for it a ton, but when we're talking about quality and just the desire to reach back for this, it is my neutral color story. So I can foresee myself reaching back for it. And it's just such an easy palette to work with. Next up would be the Berries Palette by Juvia's Place. This little palette was really cute and it kind of surprised me about how much I enjoyed it. This shade right here I wish I wish I wish I wish was just a true matte formula because it's one of those mattes that has all the glitter in it which is so annoying because they never stick around but that annoyance out of the way it's a great little palette and I really did enjoy it there's only two shimmers four mattes which I like that ratio I know I'm very alone here but I like having more mattes to work with than shimmers and the two shimmers that are in here are very very pretty I thought they were beautiful when we're talking about my color story it might not be my jive just because it is very berries and berries aren't always my thing but I do enjoy berries every now and then I did like all the looks that I got out of this and it's just a nice quality I love the pop of the vibrant color in there and like I said the shimmers in here are really nice so yeah Okay, next up, I do want to do a little disclaimer in that I don't 
recommend this palette. And it is the Moon Slice Beauty Emerald Moon Palette. I purchased this before I found out all the drama with this brand. And I just wanna say that this brand is connected to Saucebox Cosmetics. Like the owner of Saucebox Cosmetics started in Moon Slice Beauty and there's a ton of drama. I will go ahead and leave it linked down below, but basically uh, people paid for stuff and didn't receive their order. So that's why I'm very hesitant to ever like promote this as in like you should try this. They are very affordable, but I don't want you to lose your money if you were to purchase this and then your order not be fulfilled or something like that. So just want to throw out there, I don't recommend it, but I did want to rank this because it is a palette that I tried. And as you can see, I do like it. I'm trying to find another indie brand who sells this palette so I can recommend you that way because I just don't want to promote this brand because they still aren't addressing all of the drama. And I feel like that's very wrong because people paid lots of money and they're out all that money and I feel terrible. But when we're talking about this palette, the quality is very nice. I was very surprised with the quality of this palette and just the range of this palette. It had very neutral tones up here. It has the bright greens, has a very like vibrant lime green. It has the yellows and then the lime yellow greeny look. There's a lot that I did with this palette and I absolutely enjoyed that variety of colors and that variety of eye looks you could get. There's a nice mix of matte shimmers. So yeah, I put it this high, but I don't want to rave about it because I don't really recommend that you purchase from that brand. Next up would be the ColourPop Cosmetics Orange You Glad palette. Now this one, while I did put it so high, I would reach for this palette not really wanting an orange eye look because I feel like majority of the time I used this, all of the looks didn't turn out orange. They turned out more of like peachy looking colors. I might not be describing exactly correct, but when I would leave my makeup table and look in the mirror, the color that I saw in my eyes was not orange. Like for me, this is the only like orange. Everything else just leans a little bit more to the peach. And then when you blended all the eyeshadows together to create a look, the whole look just took on more of a peachy tone than orange. So I definitely would be aware of that. But when we're talking about the color, if I was wanting a very peachy eye look, I really enjoyed the looks that I got. I love that there's a shade to give some depth, not a ton of depth because it's ColourPop and they're very soft when it comes to their deepening tones but at least it gives more depth than the uh -huh honey palette so so overall while I was very disappointed that this wasn't more orange I do enjoy the mattes and even though there's only two shimmers this is a glitter these two shimmers are very pretty they're very different from each other so I felt like they had a purpose in the palette and yeah overall it's just it's a nice little palette just I should expect peach more than orange okay next up and this is the palette I would grab instead of the lucky palette from iHeart Revolution I much more prefer the iHeart Revolution tasty avocado palette this palette was so much fun and I was so blown away because like I said I tried that Lucky palette and I was just like I Heart Revolution's formula is just okay but this one's actually really nice. It has a good range of colors. Again I like that range even when it comes to a palette that is all kind of like one color with it being green themed. There's still a range so the looks that you create could be very varying and like with this palette there was one day I did all brown so I got like a super neutral look. There's one day I stuck to the more grungy tones and got a very grungy type of green eye look. There was one day I stuck more here and I got more bluish type of green I look there's a lime green in there the the lime green isn't the like this shade isn't the brightest it's definitely more I would say pastel but it's workable it'll show up to some extent you have to work with it a little bit and for me I feel like the biggest con with this palette is that there's some shimmers that are so close you know like oh I don't know like these two are pretty similar these two are pretty similar that kind of thing and it's one of those palettes that I feel like is very true to the packaging like it's themed for an avocado and inside all the colors I see avocado and I feel like so many brands don't know how to do that right and they they totally did. Oh, we, I think, oh, I think we are getting close to being done. My throat hurts. Um, next up is the Pastel Pup from Menagerie Cosmetics. This is such a cute little palette and I really like the variety of colors. This is definitely one of the softer tones when it comes to pastel. So if you're someone who's a little scared of color, you don't like anything super bright, this would be a great palette to get because it gives very soft colors and I just feel like it's very easy to work with if you just want a wash of color. But for me personally, with me not being that crazy about pastels, that's kind of why I listed it so low in my ranking of all my palettes from this year because I kind of have to be in the mood for pastels even though I know I have pastels on my eyes. I'm testing out the Gimme Glow Pastel uh, Pretty and Pastel bundle but I have to be in the mood. I don't mind doing them on occasion, but when we're talking about my all-time favorites. That's why I decided to put this where it is in the countdown. And right on the heels of that, this is the Shroud Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette. It is another pastel palette. And while this one doesn't give me the variety of colors that the Pastel Pup does, this is much more of a vibrant pastel, whereas this is more of, I feel like, a true pastel. Like, when you think of pastel, you think of wash of color. And I feel like this palette really gives you that wash of color. You can still build it up so it's noticeable, but it's just overall like a wash of color, more pastel. Whereas this, 
like. This green one, I did it. Oh, let me get a clean finger. I did some looks with it. And I feel like when you look, again, really bad with a swatch, like, I don't know. It's just so hard to pick up color for these palettes, but it's still great quality. But when you use this on my eyes, I really like that this palette gave that extra punch of color. I used the blue one day and there was like, it's just so intensely blue. There's nothing too pastel about the look, if that makes sense. So yeah, for me personally, I like more color in my looks. So I enjoy that about it. So hence why I put this a little bit higher. But if you want true pastels, I feel like you'll have to be very careful with this palette to get a very light wash of color because it just packs such a punch. Next up is the Midas Cosmetics Smoky Glow Palette. I was surprised by how much I like this palette because you guys know, I say it all the time, I'm not super into pinks. I just, they're just not my thing. And so when I saw this, I was mainly getting it to support Hannah because I was so excited for her. But I ended up really enjoying this in Dolpha Shade, so beautiful, and this Nutty Shade, amazing like those two shades were the standout for me and which is so, kind of surprised me because they're both shimmers i feel like i'm always attracted to the mattes in a palette but those two absolutely blew my mind away i love jump cut jump cut is so beautiful also warrior 2 was a very neat mix of like red but with still that pink that hot pinkness to it very pretty so yeah i was surprised by how much i like this quality is standard really good midas formula quality so i was very surprised to see that hence why it's so high in my countdown but yeah Kind of blew me away. Hannah, you created a palette that even a girl who doesn't like pink can still enjoy. And yeah, I like it. It was a good palette. All right, next we have the Ruby May Cosmetics Pop Zombie Palette. This palette really surprised me with how much I liked it because, I mean, first of all, the artwork really isn't me. I don't like to read the names of these because one is called Pus. That aside, if I'm just looking at the colors and I'm just looking at the eye looks that I created using this palette, I absolutely loved it. had such a great time. So hence why this is ranking pretty high in my countdown because I love the eye looks that I got. The eye looks that I got using this palette were so unique and different, which is always what I like to see. I love the mix of greens with the blue, with the pink, with the orange. It was just so much fun. I really did enjoy the looks that I got with this palette. So yeah, totally not my aesthetic. But when we're talking about what's inside, I really liked it. So next we have the Juvia's Plays Warrior 3 palette. This palette, you should come as no surprise just looking at this because it's just a fun, bold palette of color with two little pops of shimmers in there. This palette is definitely just when you want to go all out with the color. I had so much fun with this palette. I think my favorite look, surprisingly, is kind of like what I have on today. I used the blue and the purple, and then I think I put an icy blue. I forget if I used one of these in here or if I used a Kristen Lee Cosmetics, uh, what is it, glimmer gel on my eyelid. But anyway, regardless, I had blue and purple in my crease, and I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And yeah, it's just a really nice palette. And also the purple was surprisingly pretty easy to work with which I feel like purples can be such a struggle with and with my experience with their violets palette I was expecting Juvia's place this purple in here to also be a dud but it wasn't that bad it, it might have wanted to patch up a couple times but it was easy to rectify so I give it points for that okay next up is the Midas Cosmetics pumpkin spice latte the other little quad that I got and the reason this ranked higher is because do you guys see these bright orange this orange I'm gonna have to swatch with this finger because my other hand is just so dirty but this orange is just so beautiful I love it I feel like my camera is washing it out but when I was using it on my eyes it was just so very vibrant and fun and just oof, I almost dropped it but just so beautiful and so vibrant and I really enjoyed it I feel like I remember this being a little tricky to blend out but I think it was mostly due to the fact that these are just so similar and there's no kind of medium between this and this that's what was a little tricky so I do kind of wish this one was replaced with something else but that is the only con but when we're talking about the eye look that I would like to get with this I really want to go back to this palette and just create an orange to maroon all matte eye look I feel like it would be so very pretty next up is another little quad it is the elf bite size palette in hot jalapeno this little green quad and I'm sure it comes as no surprise because it is green it is a nice little grungy palette but it is such a good quality that's why it's ranked so very high because these two mattes are very easy they're very pigmented which honestly surprised me because I was expecting to have to work for the eye looks because I was just expecting a very chalky texture but they're not they're very nice and then these shimmers are also absolutely beautiful so intense so beautiful I was kind of expecting more of this formula in the to the rescue palette with Jay Kissa but I didn't really find that to be the case I mean some of the shadows did feel like these mattes and these shimmers but some of them didn't so anyway but all that to say, I really do like this palette, and while it is tiny, I can foresee myself reaching for it time and again because, yes, there's only four shadows, but it gives me the eye look that I absolutely love and could wear, like, every day for a week. Okay, I might get bored of that point, but you know what I mean. I can repeat this eye look many, many times because I really do like it. Just green in the crease, darker green on the outer corner, green on the lid, gold kind of in the inner corners blending into the lid. Done, and yeah. 
I like this little guy. I was surprised by how much I like the Lime Crine Venus 2 palette, but I had to put it this high because I absolutely, like I said, I love this little palette. These shimmers in here aren't like all that. They don't blow me out of the water. This, this, and this shade. They're just okay, but when we're talking about the mattes, all these five, they were absolutely beautiful and they were just such a dream to blend. I had so much fun working with this. I can't remember how many looks I got, but I can definitely foresee myself reaching back for this and creating more looks. Just so easy and effortless. Like I said, the shimmers aren't all that, but even with that, I had a lot of fun with this palette and I can definitely foresee myself reaching for it again, so hence why I put it up so high in my countdown. Okay, next up is the Flower Beauty Jungle Lights Palette. I had to put this high because you guys just heard me raving about it, so I won't bore you anymore, but the formula on these shimmers is amazing. They are absolutely beautiful. I do have to always wear them with a the glitter glue I should throw out there, and this shade specifically, I didn't really think about it in my video, but this shade, since I always picked up with a tiny brush, could be a little tricky to pick up on, but even with it being tricky, I don't mind spending the time because the results you get on your eyes beautiful I absolutely love it so yeah while this is an all shimmer palette and I feel like I never really like all shimmer palettes this is the exception because it's just so beautiful it makes such a great companion palette and it's that grungy colorful slash neutral palette that I absolutely love next up for my number two I hope I'm not forgetting any palettes because this has been a long countdown anyway it is the poppy cosmetics neon drip palette this is such a bright and beautiful palette if you're someone who wants to explore neons and see if you like it but don't want like actual neon pigments because those are intense I would say go for the neon drip palette because while they're very vibrant they're very bright they're very beautiful they're definitely kind of like a softer version of an actual neon so that's why I would say go for this palette but when we're talking about just the quality you get really beautiful eye looks the quality of these shadows I would say is a very thin formula which isn't bad it's just something I want to point out it's thin and buildable which I like and my one con about this is that the purple when you actually use it in eye looks doesn't really come out that purplish for some reason it just tends to I don't know if it melded in with the other pinks, but when I actually used it on my eyes, it didn't really come out and stand out as that intense purple. It just kind of melded into like clout it ended up looking like. But that really is the only con that stands out when I look at this palette. As I said, I'll have reviews listed down below if you want to hear all the pros and cons of any of the palettes I'm talking about. But for the sake of this countdown, I have such good memories of this palette and I am absolutely 100% going to be reaching back at some point to create more looks with this palette because I had such a good time with it. It is so nice. And also quality wise of like the palette package and just like the way presentation of the palette for a brand that just released this year and like this is their very first palette I was very impressed with it okay have you been able to guess number one any surprises here it is the September Rose slush palette oh this is just such a good palette I mean I don't want to sit here and rave about it it's not perfect it's not without fault if you want to hear my review I will have it linked down below and I also did a three looks one palette but every palette has their little quirks every palette has their cons but for me when I think about this palette when I use this palette I just have such a great time and I just enjoy it so very much and all of the eye looks that I get with it I absolutely love and there's just such a range and that's kind of why it won first place because when I'm thinking back a palette that I can't wait to use again that I can't wait to discover more that I feel like I could go to and create different looks than I've already done this it was easy when I was thinking about this this came out on top as number one because I just feel like the possibilities of this palette are endless and I really do want to go back to it and create more looks with it because it's just so very vibrant so very fun there's so much shades that just are so bright that you almost think they're neon they're just ugh, absolutely beautiful so yeah as I said yes there are cons with this palette check my reviews but when I'm thinking back and just think about my preference what I enjoy what I like to work with the types of eye looks that I like to create and what I can foresee myself reaching back for September Rose slash palette definitely won out Okay, so I am exhausted. My throat hurts from all that talking, but I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my countdown and my ranking of all the palettes that I got in the year 2020 and tried out, and I hope you guys found it helpful and enjoyable. As always, it's all just for fun and just to be able to give you guys information. As I said, in like knowing how all of these palettes that I've been trying this year, how they rank amongst themselves, because I always only do month by month by month. So it was really neat to sit down and look at the 30 plus palettes that I tried and see which ones came out on top. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below as always. And if you did enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up button on your way out as it helps me in the whole YouTube algorithm. And if you want to continue getting daily content from me, I am over on Instagram, ladykd 92 And you can check me out there. As I said, I post about every day. But with all that said, I'm going to go get a drink of water now. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye, guys.